This is a Cannondale Super 6 Evo with a brand new Shimano 105 Di2 electronic group set. And in this video, we're gonna review it. Take it for a spin, see how it performs, rides and handles, go through the details, talk about the price and specification, and whether it's a bike you should buy this year. So I'm David, you're watching Just Ride Bikes. Let's dive in. This isn't the brand new Gen 4 Super 6 Evo that launched a few weeks ago in Spain and which I rode. This is a Gen 3, which launched back in 2016. That new bike has replaced this, but not quite just yet. That new bike is limited by supply and availability, and it's quite an expensive bike as well. So for the foreseeable future, this Gen 3 will continue in the range. So the question to answer is whether it's worth buying essentially an old bike or saving up and waiting for the brand new bike. So this bike here costs in the UK, £4,250, for which you get a full carbon frame, fork, two-piece area handlebar, carbon wheels, and that electronic third-tier Shimano group set. For comparison, that brand new Gen 4 Super 6 launch just recently starts at £4,000, so less money than this, but while you get the same electronic group set, you don't get the carbon wheels. So taking that bike to the same specification as this with carbon wheels would cost you another thousand pounds or thereabouts. So you're basically looking at a 5,000 pound bike. Before we get into the ride differences between the two bikes, it's worth talking about some other changes that might be a deciding influence on whether you go for this bike or wait and save for a newer version. One of the biggest changes is the bottom bracket. They've gone from a BB30, which Cannondale invented and have used since they launched it many, many years ago, to a BSA 68mm threaded bottom bracket. One of the best changes to a new bike, in my opinion, and something which holds this bike back, is the internal cable routing system. It's not as good or elegant as a brand new Gen 4 Super 6 Evo. And we have this crazy steering lock where you can't turn the handlebar more than that. Now, when you're riding the bike, that's not an issue at all. There's never a point when you have to turn the handlebar that much. It's only really an issue when you're transporting the bike or wheeling it out of the house for your ride. Visually, the old bike looks fairly similar to a new bike, but there are some differences in the wind tunnel if you believe their claims. The new bike is said to be 11 watts faster or less drag at 45 kilometers per hour and really shows how bike brands like Candel are really getting to the sort of limitations of current bike design and how far they can really push aerodynamics whilst maintaining that low weight. And weight is an area where the new bike is definitely an improvement. The frame overall is lighter and you can get a top end build down to 6.8 kilos if you throw some dual race and some fancy wheels at it. And then we have the same tire clearance. 34 mm wide tires will fit in this frame. So a lightweight aero race bike with space for wide tires. Unfortunately, this bike only comes with 25 mm wide tire and they're quite a low quality Vittoria Rubinio Pro. I mean, they're okay, they're not rubbish, but the ride quality isn't on the same level as a Corsa from Vittoria. And on a bike of this price to have a low quality tire and not a top end high quality tire to match the rest of the bike, is a real shame. The other thing that still makes this a good bike to choose compared to a new version is that the stiffness and the comfort is comparable to that new bike. They retain the same stiffness in the head tube and bottom bracket area. And despite the differences in the seat posts and the rear stays, the comfort in their words is about the same. And admittedly based on a brief first ride on that new Gen 4 Super 6 Evo, the way this bike handles compared to that new bike barring specification and weight changes, it's very similar. We have that same really encouraging level of power transfer when you're out of the saddle and sprinting up a climb, feels really immediate and direct. Great steering response as well, feels really good in high speed corners, really intuitive handling. And then the comfort through the saddle is good too. Something the Super 6 Evo has always been good at. A lightweight aero race bike that also offers good comfort. Not quite a patch on an endurance bike like their own Synapse, but with a 28 or even a 30mm wide tire, means you get enough comfort 
So most riding applications and compares really well to a Tarmac SL7 from a Specialized, a Trek Monda SLR, and of course a Giant TCR Advance. They're all on a very kind of similar level and a very high level of ride quality and comfort given how lightweight and stiff and responsive these bikes are. I've always loved the Super 6 Evo. Just has that perfect blend of weight, stiffness, comfort and handling that you want for racing or just fast riding for fun and fitness. It's fast, good comfort, fantastic handling and there's only a few blemishes that really hold it back compared to the new one. It would be great to get both bikes in a wind tunnel and do some testing at real speeds but even the 45k an hour speed they tested the new bike at you're only looking at about what's 11 watts or something so not all that much really i mean great if you're racing of course and you're paid to win races or try and win races but if you're just a normal rider like you and i and you ride for fun but you do love going fast then it probably won't make much difference so if you can live with the bottom bracket you don't mind the differences in the cable routing system then this new bike is it's still a really good pick and it still stands up well compared to other bikes I've been testing lately. The Trek Monda SLR, Carnario C68, my own giant TCR Advanced and a specialized Tarmac SL7. So even though it's been superseded by a newer, better model, it's not suddenly a bad bike. It's still a great bike. It still rides extremely well does all those things you want from a bike like this. But other than that, it's ready to go, ready to race, ready to give you your best performance this summer. There's been lots and lots of criticism aimed at Shimano's new 105 DIT group set. But when you leave price and weight and naming to one side, the performance is fantastic. And the best feature are the hoods. The ergonomics are the same as Ultegra and Durace, and these hoods are fantastic. They're the best in the game right now. Feel really good in the hands, really small, really smooth. The shifting performance isn't as fast as Ultegra or Durace, and the brakes, you don't have a server wave, but really, really small differences. They're there, but if you're not looking for them, you probably won't notice. And out here right now, this group set feels really good. And I know you don't need electronic shifting on a road bike, but it is very nice. And lots of people clearly want it and want trumped need when it comes to shiny new bikes and lots of other things in this world as well. So yes, you don't need it, but do you want it? Probably. So are you crazy? to go out and buy a Gen 3 Evo when it's a new Gen 4 just being launched. I know some people will say yes, but I don't think so. Unless you want the latest and the best and you're prepared to wait for it and pay for it, I think the bike still stands up really well. It's still a really high performance bike, fast, lively, handling, comfort, all big ticks, just work so well. So don't think if you bought this bike now, you'd be any way upset if your buddy pulled up alongside you on a Gen 4. And look at it this way. It's like buying a brand new car versus a three-year-old car. That brand new car is expensive, depreciates as soon as you drive it off the showroom. But that three-year-old car, Virtually brand new, very low miles, but a lot cheaper. And I think that logic applies here as well. So should you buy or avoid this new Super 6 Evo or hold out for the brand new Gen 4 Super 6 Evo? Well, if you want the latest and the best, then clearly waiting for a new version is a way to go. But I think barring some of the differences, this bike is still a valid choice in 2023. So definitely a bike I can recommend, one to put on your shortlist, especially if you wanna buy a bike right now, don't wanna wait for a new bike 
and you want a carbon frame, carbon wheels, and an electronic group set. And if you wanna see that video on the brand new Gen 4 Super 6 Evo, then watch the video up here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.